everybody, Deep Fried Dan here, professional chef. Today I'm going to make you a sausage mega mix pie. In fact, I'm going to make you two sausage mega mix pies, okay? It's my take on a pie with sausages. It's going to be fantastic. Now, when you live alone, it's hard to get motivated to make a meal just for one person. You know, spending a lot of time cooking and stuff like that. So what I'm doing is making a batch enough food to feed me for at least a week, probably two or three. Um, so let's just crack on with it. I'll get straight on to the ingredients. Come with me. To make these sausage pies you need easy ingredients, okay? You don't want to be messing around um, chopping and cutting and everything like that. So the only thing I'm going to be chopping today is a few onions and a few potatoes. The rest is like pre-done for me. So I've got some shortcut uh, pastry mix short crust pastry mix sorry all ready for me I'm not making my own today I've got loads of vegetables I've got sweet corn I've got carrots sliced I've got some new potatoes as well I've got some broad beans I've got sliced mushrooms in water and garden peas in water they're all done you see that's gonna save me a lot of time I've got oxo cubes I've got uh, hot chili powder I've got golden breadcrumbs, I've got tomato concentrate, I've got some British beef, you can't beat British beef, Richmond sausages because they're skinny, proper sausages because they're fat, I've got some bacon and I've got mature cheddar grated and parmesan cheese grated. So I'm going to save so much time because they're already grated, they're already prepared, that's already done. Come with me to the kitchen. The first thing we have to do is brown all these babies off. Get all the meat done. Come on, this is going to be ace. It's going to be really quick as well. You need heat. You need a pan. You need a bit of oil. And you need your meat. Right, we're going to start. We're going to brown off this baby. The ground beef. British beef. Slap that in there. And remember, when you're making beef, you've got to cut it up as it's frying, otherwise you end up with big lumps. Just keep cutting it up until it's all brown all over and it looks fantastic. Now as you can see, it's brown. Don't be fooled, it does take longer than four seconds, which it looked like it takes then. It's just that I'm good at video editing and I've, I've taken a few minutes out, okay? Probably about five or seven. So you get all that brown and just shove it in a pan at the side. Onto the sausages. Now can you see the difference between the two different kinds of sausages? You've got thin ones like this. Little thin pink ones, okay? They're from Ireland, they're beautiful. And then you've got your big thick butcher's ones. Now, they're there. The difference being the big thick butcher's ones always come attached I don't know why, um, I'm guessing, I don't know, the animals poo them out all joint together, I don't know, I don't know why, but you've got to cut them up, alright? So we split them six sausages, doesn't sound much does it, six sausages, but I think you've got 20 there, so uh, 12 there, so don't worry. Cut them up, now, I don't want big whole sausages, so I'm going to cut them up a bit. We'll cut them in thirds. I hope this uh, fries up okay, but I'm cutting them in thirds with my new knife, what Oliver gave me. Fantastic. Okay. So we had six sausages there, we've got 18 now, 18 just like that, just by making a couple of quick cuts. Do the same with these, but I'm just going to halve these ones, because they're thinner. So there's 24. 
all them sausages you've got now, we've like tripled the amount of sausages we had just by making a few cuts. Let's get them fried off, we want them brown. So there you have it, we've got us brown sausages, okay? Now I've got a little tip for you here. One thing which is wrong with the world is we're still making round sausages. I don't understand why. If you go to Scotland, it's very popular to buy square sausages. And they're basically like little round flat things. <laughs> little square flat things. And you just turn them over once. With sausages all over the world, they're round. And it's very hard to get them brown evenly all over. I've got a cure, okay? You get a beer can and you just tap them down and it makes them square. Okay, so you only have to turn them four times. And it's easy to turn them, trust me. As you can see, because I'm a professional and look what I've managed to do. I've browned them evenly and perfectly. So that's the sausage done. Let's get on to the bacon. We need to do the bacon as well. So here's my bacon, okay? I've gone for... Butcher's Choice British Thick Cut Unsmoked Rindless Back Bacon. Any bacon will do, but what it's very important to do is not have fatty bacon. Okay, so I went for the least fatty I could find. It's still got all this on the side though, and I don't want that, so I'm going to cut that off. Don't worry, it will be used later. But it doesn't want to be attached to these bacon bits because it will cook at different speeds. I'll explain it more later. You want that crispy. So I'm going to take that off. I could take it off a bit better, but you're watching me and it's, it's hard. It's hard to cook when you're being watched by somebody. So I've got all that off anyway. I'll use that later, so I'm just going to put that to one side. In the meantime, you get your bacon and you cut it up into tiny pieces. Okay, it makes it easier to fry and because you're putting it in a pie, you want lots of little bits all over the pie. You don't just want a few pieces, you want as many pieces as you can get. We've got beef, ground beef, we've got two, kind, two sizes of sausages. We've got, um, now we've got this bacon, loads of different kind of textured meats, and that's what I'm looking for. So you don't feel like you're having the same mundane, boring taste all the way through your meal. It's different textures, you see. That's what it's all about. So there's your bacon, all lovely and browned and ready. It's basically cooked. Obviously, bacon doesn't take long to cook. That's cooked, we put that in with the sausages and the mince and we just do the fat now, we'll just move on to the fat from the bacon, remember the fat. So we put the fat in, there you are, I've cut it all up into small pieces, put the fat in. Now one thing to remember with the fat, obviously if you're big and fat, don't put fat in. If you've had a heart attack recently, don't put fat in. Putting the fat back in is for is for lean, fit, healthy people who can get away with it for a couple of more years, yeah? Like myself, really, because I'm a very fit kind of guy. Um, you put the fat in, and what you want to do with the fat is make it almost black, really crispy. It's the crispy you're after, um, because there's a lot of taste in the fat. Very bad for you, but ooh, it's nice, it's really nice. It's the best part of the... Uh, of the cow. I think it comes from the foot of the cow, but I'm not sure. I don't know which part it comes from, really. I should do. I'm a professional chef. Anyway, let's brown this off, and uh, I'll come back to you in a few minutes. So there you have it, guys. Just a few pieces of fat. All nicely burnt and crispy and yummy. As I say, if you're fat, obese and ugly, don't make this meal. What you need to do is have a yoghurt, um, low fat yoghurt, and it'll make you thin and skinny like me. So we put that in with the rest of us meat, which is here, look, it's all ready. Now I know it looks like a lot of food for one person, but as I say, this is to last me a week, 
I'm going to make this into a few different uh, pies and I might even freeze a little bit of it as well but this is ideal it's all edible you can eat it now perfect so we'll pull that all together and we'll get on with the vegetables we're going to fry some onions now okay the important part here is to remember to wash your cutting surface properly and your knife properly because this is where you get cross contamination with your meat and your vegetables okay if you don't do that you're going to get scurvy aids um, salmonella broken legs you get all sorts of stuff if you don't wash wash it properly so make sure you do right I've got two onions I'm going to cut them what I do is I take the top off and I take the bottom off and then I take this bit around the edge off Oh, I'll come back to you in a minute. So what you want is what I call baby onions and mummy onions. Okay, we'll start with mummy onions. You slice half of the onion. And that's it. That's your mummy onions because they're bigger, right? And then you do the same with the other one. But you dice it, you make them nice and small. Like babies, you see, mummies and babies. So we do that one onion as mummies and one onion as babies. Another tip when you're frying onions is we don't particularly want them brown. If they go brown, it doesn't matter. Great. What we want to do is soften them up. They have to be soft, okay? So don't add more oil to the onions because the oil will make them brown rather than soften them up just leave the juice in from the meats because it's more watery and because it's watery it just softens them that's a serious tip I'm getting really good at this cooking malarkey I can tell you so yeah we're just going to soften the onions and they'll probably go brown but that doesn't matter as long as they're soft So there you have it, the onions are all soft, lightly browned, perfect, just how I want them. Now you might be asking why did he dice some of the onion and you know I have baby onion and mummy onion. The reason being I like to have different sizes, different consistencies in the meal. I do want to find some big chunks of onion, okay? Um, because diced onion does tend to mush and just go to liquid. So I've got some big onion in as well, so when I get it on my fork when I've finished, I just go mm. So that's the onion done, now we just need to add the other vegetables So there's his onions in one pan, or you can use a large mixing bowl ideally, but I haven't got one Now, the canned vegetables, ideally buy them like that, yeah? With the thing on top so you can pull it off Unfortunately, five of the ones I've bought haven't got them on, so I have to use one of these. Now, my friend in a video had a machine she made uh, better than sex cake, she called it. And she had a machine and she just went Zzz, and it took the top off. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I haven't got that. I haven't got that luxury. I've got this, which doesn't work, okay? It's for opening tins, as you know, but when you go like that, it doesn't do anything so I basically have to go around it like that I just have to keep going like that until the top comes off so you do that with your broad beans with your carrots with your peas and your sliced mushrooms okay I prepared these earlier and what you're going to do is put them all in this pan with the onions Okay, this is your vegetable mix. We've got as meat mix, that's sorted. This is as vegetable mix. I'm going to put them all in there and I'm going to give them a little stir up and I'll come back to you. Now you need to make a little bit of gravy, okay? I'm using Oxo Cubes beef flavour. I don't know if you have these around the world, but we do in England. Uh, gravy granules, that's all they are in little cubes. 
There's two. I'm using two, okay? There's two I prepared earlier. You sprinkle them in there and then you add some water. Now, I don't want too much water. Where's my thingy gone? I've got a thing. Oh, here we are. My new thingy. Look, I've got this. Off Oliver again. You mix that up until it disappears. There, it's gone. It's magic. Absolute magic, I'm telling you. Oxo cubes, it's the future. So you get your vegetables. You get your Oxo gravy. You put that in there. Easy. Then you get some of this. Now this is fantastic. Double concentrate tomato puree, okay? What it is, is basically somebody in some factory somewhere, he gets a load of tomatoes and he squeezes them into tiny little bits and puts them in a tube. And this is what you get. So basically, it looks like two or three tomatoes, doesn't it? It's not. There's probably about 50 tomatoes in there. It's really clever stuff. Get some. I'm telling you, this is the future as well. So we stick some of that in. As much as you want, really. I don't care. Yeah, half a tube of that. And chilli powder. Hot chilli powder. I like everything hot. And I mean hot. Spicy and hot. So I'm going to bung a load of that in. In fact, I'm going to take the top off because it doesn't come out quick enough with the top on. Shove that in. Half, yeah, about half of that. Chilli powder. I'm telling you. Heat. That's what makes a meal. If you don't like things hot, put ice cubes in it. Something cool. I don't know. Ice lollies or something. Um, and mix all that up together. And that is your base, basically. You've got your base um, vegetables. And you've got your base meat. Now comes the fun part where we actually make some pies. Now is the part where it's really handy to have a huge bowl. I haven't got one. Um, that's my big pan and that's my biggest other thing I can mix in. We need to put them together now. Um, so I'm just going to try my best. I'll stick the vegetables in here with the meat. It's go oh, it's going over the side a bit already. Remember, this is a meal for one, but this is going to feed me all week. There you are. Vegetables in. Sorted. It's going to go over the side, so there's no point using a, a mixing thing because I need to... Right, you just need to mix it all together, yeah? You want all your meat, all your vegetables equally mixed. It's very important. And then, the next stage is we're going to put it in two pies. Two lovely pies. Mm. I'm telling you, you're all going to be making this by the end of the week. This is amazing. Right, pie number one. First things first, get your potatoes, peel them and then uh, boil them basically you're going to make some mash alright so get these peeled cut them up a bit and get them boiled and I'll come back to you when I've done that yes all cut up put your potatoes in the water add salt Add pepper. And wait until they're boiled and soft, okay? Well, parboiled. Let's parboil them. We don't want them fully soft. No, let's make them fully soft. We want them fully soft for this recipe. Now we need some magic sauce, okay? This is magic. It's called Coleman's Sausage Casserole Mix. Okay, it's basically like magic dust. You can get it from gnomes, leprechauns, angels, um, rainbows, places like that, witches. It's worth getting, honestly. What you do is you rip the top off, off the magic dust, and you put it in a, in a little cup. A measuring beaker and it looks like that 
Now we have 300 mool. Yeah, 300 mool of water. Which is that much. We give it a mix up and we're going to add that in a moment. At this point we're going to mash up the potatoes which are now ready. I haven't got a masher. Very annoyed with myself. I didn't get one. Okay. But we've got our potatoes. They're ready to mash. What we need to do is add some butter. Alright. Well you know how to make mash. You just add butter. You add milk. If you haven't got any milk, just improvise, as long as it's milkish, okay? I've got some chocolate milk, milkshake. This'll do the job. You don't want too much milk anyway, just put a bit of that in. And then my secret ingredient, which I always put in with my mash, is mustard. I think it makes it amazing. Mustard mash is amazing. Now, I'm using English mustard, which is probably the strongest in the world. It's very, very hot. Um, but I like it. So we'll throw that in. And now you're just going to have to bear with me, because I'm, I'm going to have to mash this with, with a fork. Uh, come back to me. I'll be five minutes, yeah? Don't worry, I found one. Look, obviously I'm a professional cook. I'm not going to be without a potato masher, am I? That's mashed. Right, now we just need to make the pie itself. This is the easy bit. Come with me, I'm over here. So we get ourselves a bowl, okay, which we can put in the oven. We get our fantastic mix. Magic mega mix. And we coat all the bottom with this. Quite a lot of this. I'm telling you, the thing about this as well is it's going to be so filling because there's so many things in here. You're not going to need much. This is going. To, this will probably feed five people, and this is only. I've got all that left yet, so I've got enough meals here. Honestly, this can be my breakfast every day, and the other thing can be me my dinner every day. It's fantastic. So you stick all that in there. I would say that's about enough. I'm happy with that. Level it all out. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm very happy with that amount. Get your magic dust. from. I got this from a rainbow, but you can get it from fairies and, you know, elves and leprechauns. They all sell it. Stick this in there. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to save a little bit for my other pie. But that's just how you want it. That's ideal, is that. Add a bit of beer. Because it needs to be quite liquidy. Otherwise it'll burn too quickly. That's your base. It's done. Put that to one side for a second. Now, topping. It's basically cottage pie. Have you ever made a cottage pie? It's just like cottage pie, but not with the cottage inside. It's got like a mansion inside instead. Now, we get this potato. Um, there's something I forgot to put in here. What was it? Ah, cheese. I'm going to put some mature cheddar cheese in with it. I don't want to overdo that. I'm going to put more on top halfway through the cooking. I don't want it to burn the top too quickly, you see. So I'm just going to mix that in. It's just going to make it nice and sticky and all, all together and bubble up together. So it's going all the way through the potato. As I say, I'm going to add uh, more cheese later on when it's almost ready. So that's now done. Put that on top of your pie. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You don't get this on Nigella Lawson, Gordon Ramsay, or any other chef. They don't know how to make something like this. This is just a pie made by the people for the people. This is how we would cook. You know, we haven't got all the utensils they've got on these television cooking programmes. 
we're not as we're not paid loads of money like they are we haven't got it all we can't afford the ingredients so we make do with what we've got and that's exactly what I've done here there you have it guys that's the first one ready to go in the oven I'm just gonna clean up the edges a little bit because I don't want it seeping through and bubbling through whilst it's cooking but yeah you get the gist that's the top of it that's my pie on to pie number two right pie number two short crust pastry okay now I've never used this before I've always made my own because I'm a professional but I thought I'll give it a go because a lot of people do use this what you do is you put it down on a table or wherever and you add water and you just keep adding water and going like that for a bit until you get a special dough you're gonna have to leave me it's gonna take me a while this I just hope it comes out right if it doesn't it's because the company haven't done it right okay so the poor people pastry works quite well I have my top there's my top all ready to go on now with this bit I just need to cut this up I need to make some strips basically so here's my strips And what I'm going to do with them is place them around the pan like so, going all the way around and this is going to help seal in the pie, stop it from coming out. So I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay that worked amazingly, as you can see, perfect, going all the way around the edge. What I would suggest is put some egg around so it doesn't stick. and make sure you use the right bowl man I don't believe this oh what a dick what a complete dick if you're stupid enough to use the wrong bowl just get your pastry and uh, make it bigger okay it's going to be thinner but it's going to cover it it'll save you from transplanting this pastry onto the other bowl I'm a professional, I don't do things like that. Now, another little tip, whilst you're rolling it out, try not to knock off a can of potatoes onto the floor, okay? If you do that and you've got guests, I suggest you throw them away and just don't put potatoes in. If you live alone and you're the only person who's going to be eating it, maybe you could pick the potatoes up off the floor and put them back. I wouldn't do it personally. I'm, I'm just saying, just trying to give you a little tip, yeah? So, we'll put his lid to one side. We'll take his base. There we go. Now, slam a load of that luscious, luscious, mega mix, meaty, vegetable-y, yummy, middle mixture, God knows what, sex. This, this is, this is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Sex pie, I should call this. I really should, but no. It's sausage mega mix pie. So, I've got that in. I don't want to go too far up, and I'll show you why now. Okay? I'm just going to level that out a bit. Now, first thing I need to do is add the potato I had left from what I made from the last potato okay I'm going to put that over the top and I'm just going to spread it out a bit basically because I don't want to waste it nothing wrong with that potato then I'm going to add some new potatoes take it if you do find any bits if you did drop them off the floor this is the time to take them off but uh, I didn't drop them so I'm okay make sure they're evenly divided out and take off all the hairs and things as I say if, if you have hairs obviously if you're silly enough to have them there because I like a bit of different texture you see now I want to add the rest of my magic pixie mix which I bought from a rainbow Put that over the top 
absolutely divine. Divine. Then we just need to add the top as so. Ideally, you want to brush this with egg around the edges so that it sticks to this better. I, well, I can't be bothered to be honest with you. I have got an egg, but I've been cooking for so long now, I don't want to be cooking anymore. Pinch all around the edges and then cut off. Sorry, you can't see this very well, can you? Pinch all around the edges and then cut off any surplus bits. So there you have it, perfect. And the bobbles from the potatoes add to it, as you see as it when it cooks, it's gonna look amazing. Right, with the excess pastry you've cut off the edge, flatten it out, get your rolling pin, flatten that out. And what I like to do to make cooking a little bit more fun is just make yourself a little a little pattern. A little pattern to go in the middle of the in the middle of the pie. Um, something fun, you know, something to make you enjoy your pie as you're eating it. So there you go. As you can see, I've made a lovely little mermaid. I do like mermaids. I'd love to meet one one day. Um, and all you have to do then is just cut a few little holes in to let a bit of air out so that it cooks properly. And there you have it, guys. One, not just one. Two beautiful pies. Let's get these in the oven and we'll see what comes out. Come on, this is going to be fantastic. Okay, so they're in the oven. Close that. Temperature wise, I don't know, I really don't know. So I'm just guessing at number seven. And we'll see how it goes. I'm guessing it's going to take maybe 40 minutes, maybe less, maybe more. We'll just see how we get on, yeah? Right, the top of the potato pie, okay, that needs its extra topping on now, it's, it's starting to brown is the potato. So I need to make something to make it extra brown and extra tasty. So what I'm using, I'm going to put some more of the mature cheddar on there. So I'll put some of that in a cup. I'm going to use all of this uh, parmesan cheese, grated. And nothing browns better than breadcrumbs. So I'm going to slap a load of breadcrumbs in there as well. Now we need to mix that together. How we're we going to do that? I don't know. I don't know. You just have to improvise, don't you? No, don't do it like that because you'll get it all over. Oh, damn. Get a spoon. I should have used a little bowl, really. So you mix all that together. And then you get the pie out of the oven. Oh, it's almost ready. Ow, 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 ow. Hey, enough of that. Ow! Ow! Okay, that's out. You can see it's going lovely and brown already. Now I'm going to sprinkle all this on top. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous, man. Absolutely gorgeous. This will brown in no time, I'm telling you. Get all that on there. And spread it out evenly and just let that melt just let that melt go brown and go mm. beautiful straight back in the oven leave that until it's golden and that won't take long I can tell you okay both pies are ready I've got the uh, potato topped one under the grill just to brown off the cheese and the pie underneath Wow, perfect. Let's get these babies on the table. Look at this. Look at this. Look! You don't get better than that. Look! Absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous, man. I can't believe how good I am. I just don't know what's up with me. I didn't used to be able to cook anything, and now I'm just, I'm amazing, I'm amazing. Let's get this on the plate and taste it. I'm, oh, I can't wait for this. There's enough here to feed about 11, 12, 13, 15 people. Um, but there's only me, so I'm going to have it now. I'll have it for, for dinner later. I'll have it for supper and breakfast. Right, guys, seriously, if there's anyone in the world who doesn't think this is going to be nice, there's something wrong with you. 
You have your hot dogs tonight or whatever you're going to have. I'm having the best meal ever made by a human being. And I'll be honest with you, I just made it up as I went along. I've never made it before. I didn't get it out of a book. I'm just a natural cook, a professional. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. Oh, pie, pie. Wow. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you sausage mega mix pies one and two. Look at it. Just look at it. I made this. Right, I'm going to try pie number one first, which has the potato top on it. Oh, I, I just can't believe how good I am. Mmm. Oh, man. That is unbelievable. The second one just had a little bit of difference to it. Oh, it's nice and hot as well. I like my spices. I put a lot of chilli powder in that. If you were served this in a restaurant, you'd never want to eat anything else. I'm telling you, man. That is the best food you've ever seen in your life. Make it. Please make it. So I'll have to leave you with that, because I want to eat this whilst it's still warm. Thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, if you've got any recipe ideas, send them in. I might make it, you never know. But uh, from, me f uh, from me for now, Deep Fried Dan, signing out. Thank you and goodbye. Woohoo! Nice. It all went right as well. Woo! Thank you for watching guys, please don't forget to click subscribe over there, if you want to see me other videos, click up there, if you want to see me other channel where I do metal detecting, click down there, and you've also got these four videos here, so thank you very much for watching, I'll see you all next time, bye bye!